You're watching Apocalypse and the End Times, and I'm your host, Paul McGuire, and we're going to continue on in our incredible uh, interview with Anthony Patch, researcher, author, speaker. We've been talking about the CERN Collider and uh, uh, the reality of uh, a portal that has been opened uh, by scientists and uh, communication, uh, according to Stephen Hawking, uh, the famous scientist, with, with some kind of entity, some kind of uh, intelligence or whatever from another dimension. And so you need to watch this program and you need to uh, send and use social media. Uh, you can send the link of this program on God TV for your friends uh, to watch. And you should record it to watch it again because we're covering a lot of territory. Anthony, um, he, Anthony is also uh, a, no, a novelist and in his novels he weaves these truths that we're talking about. His novels such as Covert Catastrophe and Diamonds in the Rough. Anthony, before we get into the questions again, you, 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 you deal with a field which is cutting edge science. You deal with a field that is theological, uh, cosmology, biology. I mean, and this is like really high level stuff. And yet uh, the Lord has gifted you to be able to communicate it uh, understandably. G give our viewers how... How were you prepared in terms of education or research? How, how were you able to uh, uh, get into this and to understand this? Tell us a little bit about your background. Well, I'm a retired paramedic. I spent 27 years in Oakland. But when I retired from there, really, I, I felt compelled to continue what had been a hobby. A science has always been a hobby of mine. Mm -hmm. And I attended UC Berkeley, and I did my basic science there. But really, it was more multidisciplinary of reading Predating the internet, I subscribed to many, many different types of magazines, multiple disciplines, and drew scientific from Scientific magazines? Predominantly okay. scientific. Okay. And when the Lar Large Hadron Collider became more apparent in some of the science magazines, because it was founded in 1954, I really latched onto it because I was fascinated with the machinery and the technology, and it was so cutting edge that I followed it and I have continued to follow it. But very recently, in about 2012, the Lord put it on me to write about it. And I had no designs to write a book. But I found myself compelled, and then he made it a very humorous relationship in the writing between he and I. It was a running joke. How, how was it a running that. joke? Because what I was reading, not only some of the occult that we've spoken of, but the science and understanding how they wanted to affect mankind and what the ultimate agenda was, that could lead to some profound depression. But the Lord oh, balanced yes, yes, that yes, out. Yes, yes. He balanced it for me mentally right. by establishing this line of what I call British type humor, very dry humor okay. in my constant communication, my constant conversation with him. And it was refreshing while I'm writing about all of this, right. he would reveal something to me and say, go look at this. And I go down this rabbit hole of research and I go, oh, okay, I got it, I got it, got it. Okay, fine, and I'll put it into the novel. That was the process in a nutshell. But I've always been fascinated with science and I think I kind of you know, drank the Kool-Aid for a while. <laughs> you know? But right. the idea that he revealed to me- When you say drank the Kool-Aid, uh, you, you mean that you... Sort of the propaganda. Right. You accepted the, the secular humanistic scientific worldview. Okay. Exactly. Right. But I've been a, a Christian. I accepted Christ as my Savior at age 16, and I've had my ups and downs like we all do. But I've always had this constant connection with him. And he made it very profound right around that time frame that they, the time is short. You need to get the message out in a unique way. I'm going to equip you with the skills. I'm no one special. I'm not a prophet. I always say that. But he has taken me, Joe Average, who had a hobby interest in physics and other areas of science, and said, look, I'm going, I've prepared you with this curiosity and the knowledge that you've gained so far. Now you need to translate this. He made me a translator of the arcane complex science and said, your curiosity has given you the understanding of the mechanisms Let's focus on particle physics as an example among biology and DNA. And he said, translate this for the average person. Now, I'm an average guy, but I have a 
a desire to learn the complex. So take the complex, translate it, and present it to people so that they can be forewarned, they can be psychologically prepared, they can come to Christ knowing this information that's right in front of them, and then they have that ability to have the full armor of God to protect them and remove the fear from what is coming upon mankind. So that's been my mission, is to prepare people, both with the armor of God by accepting Christ, but also mentally, psychologically, okay, this is coming, I kind of expected it, I can deal with it, I can roll with it. So that's in a nutshell. It's very interesting what you said about as the Lord, in your personal relationship with the Lord, and He was leading you to research and write things, you described uh, your personal relationship with the Lord as somewhat conversational and employing British humor, you know, dry humor. Sure. That would could take could take potentially heavy topics that could potentially lead somebody to depression, yep. but you were able to have a sense of humor. And when I heard you say that, I thought it was very interesting uh, how God works yeah. in a supernatural personal relationship. But I couldn't help think when you shared that uh, the biblical principle that the joy of the Lord is our strength, yep. and through your relationship with the Lord and that sense of humor. Uh, God was giving you supernatural joy. So I would just want to encourage the viewer, um, the way that, that we live in the last days victoriously is to, to make ourselves available to the Lord imparting in us supernatural joy. How could you, in a rational human level, right. derive any pleasure or joy from the things that I'm presenting? No, no, That's no, I, irrational. <laughs> yes, right, exactly. So it is supernatural when he imparts this humor. Amen. And I think you said it well, so I'll, I'll stop Amen. there. We have short time. Okay, so, so there's so many important things. And now I, I've, uh, you know, people say, oh, oh, this is new age and, and whatever. Well, that, that's nonsensical. That's like saying your uh, cell phone's new age. Yeah. You, you know what True. I'm saying? True. You're talking about science and technology. And your study of the Bible and your understanding of theology, you, you then draw in from a biblical worldview an analysis from a biblical worldview of what's going on based on the documented statements of these people, Correct. which matches up, uh, for example, with uh, the Apostle Paul in Ephesians. For our fight is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, and the dark unseen forces of wickedness in heavenly places. So mm -hmm. this, this hierarchy of beings that, that, that Hawking alluded to or, and the other uh, director of the Hadron Collider it's not non-biblical. It's not new age. It's Correct. simply an integration of technology and science. Uh, and that's not new age. That's what, what science... I don't think a lot of people get the fact that science has merged with the, the new age movement and Correct. the occult. Arthur C. Clarke, who, who wrote uh, uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey, he coined the word science is magic. Right. And uh, Alice Huxley, who wrote the book uh, Brave New World, he talked about the scientific dictatorship or the technocratic elite. Correct. And as yeah. you know, the word technocratic comes from techni, which is where we get the word technology, but techni is also comes from the word uh, that means witchcraft. Mm -hmm. So they're reconfiguring reality. Now, that's not new age. This is what the scientists are doing. That's correct. So, so Tell, before we get into some of the more scientific and biblical things, just tell our viewers briefly um, the importance of knowing this and how it relates to the Bible and to Bible prophecy and what's happening in the end times. Well, it's evidentiary, as we said earlier. I think that if people will accept the fact that you can go to the Internet and you can see the documentation of what I've already described. That's evidence that you could take to someone who perhaps hasn't been saved and use that as leverage, as inducement, as, as a way to get them to begin to think critically for themselves. Something that a lot of us have lost because of environmental, because of culture, because of education system, uh, the indoctrination processes we've talked about, have lost that critical analytical process. Yeah, right. That, that critical thinking skill, it's a skill set. Right. But if you can take the evidence and encourage someone to use their rudimentary abilities to think critically, 
and examine the evidence and perhaps pursue that evidence, which is the purpose of my books, then they can come to a realization themselves that the evidence speaks for itself, not only the physics that's going on, but the agenda that's driving this, the physics. Because I often say you cannot separate the physical from the spiritual. Right. So to say that science operates in a vacuum is full of hot air. Yeah, right. It's nonsense. Right. right. So science is definitely, it's alchemy. Yes, Of alchemy. old, today. Right. sorcery. It is sorcery, right. and it is spiritual, but they're integrated together. The goal is to take the evidence and save souls. To take the evidence and save that souls. you're talking about and save souls. Exactly. And, and I agree with you because, you know, there are so many young people, the millennial generation, younger, uh, adults of, of all age groups. They're turned off by religion. They're turned off by the religion of Christianity. But when you start to use uh, these scientific facts which are loosely interpreted in all the movies they're watching. Mm -hmm. The one with Johnny Depp when he uh, uploads his consciousness into a, a computer. And we could go right. on and on and on. Sure. Uh, you that grab is tangible and relatable. Right. It has relevance to their frame of mind exactly. and their present way of thinking and their culture. Exactly. The generation, generation, generation. Yes. It's relevant to them because you can give them something that's not only tangible, right. but something that they understand because of the predictive programming they've been fed. Right, right. We flip that around 180 degrees, that programming, and say, use that programming as evidence to say, here's the truth. Amen. Now that that was a profound statement, because uh, you're using uh, you're being wise as a serpent, but harmless as a dove. You're using the enemy's strategy. Flip it 180 but degrees. You're flipping it and using it as a, uh, a spiritual warfare and evangelistic tool. And because Lucifer does the same thing. Yes. Does he not? Yes, he does. He flips it upside down. He turns it 180. That's right. We're going to go another 180 back to the point of origin that yes. God created yes. full circle. Amen. So this is about, ultimately, if you want to boil it all down, this is about soul winning and evangelism, but effective evangelism, the kind of evangelism that produces fruit. You say, well, Paul, what are you talking about? You know, you know, I think this is new age. Well, no, it's not. And number two is, and I'm sure Anthony can share with you the same thing. I get emails all the time from people who have, receive Jesus Christ from, as their Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. And I get a ton of people who have backslidden from Jesus mm -hmm. and they've returned or they've accepted the Lord because they heard somebody with a message like yours that integrated okay. the reality that they're, you know what I'm saying? Sure, sure. Powerful evangelistic tool in winning souls, especially, especially the very people who need it the most, uh, the, the, the age group that, are, that have walked away from Christ. Agreed. Now, um, let's get back to the, to the B system, because obviously the B system is in the Bible in numerous places, Revelation 13 especially, with the false prophet and the Antichrist and the mark of the beast, which could be a microchip implant, uh, nanochip, uh, whatever. Um, you talk about, it's difficult for me to pronounce the name of the, the computer. The adiabatic. The adiabatic. Means without heat process, adiabatic mm -hmm. quantum Computer, AQ, AQC is the easier way to talk about it, AQC. Okay, now you relate this to the B system. I want to find out why. Sure. But you you tell us, and I want our viewers to grasp this, that this, are they building this computer now? It's already been built in the model 2048. They started with a 128 model. Right, not the year, but the no, model the number, model 2048. Number. Right. It's, it's already built. Well, there have been multiple generations that have okay, been but built. The, but, but the early stages, like early the early one, Apple... The first one was 2008. Wow. The 2048 was released to the public right. in January of last year, 2015. Now, you describe it as equivalent to 7 billion human brains. H have they, has, has this computer reached that level yet? Yes. So this computer... How big is it, by the way, physically? Well, interestingly, it's housed in a black cube. Can you say Mecca? Right. Black sun, 
the worship of, and we go to 2001 with the obelisk, right? right? It wasn't a cube, but it was a black right. rectangle. H how big of a black cube so is it? So we're thousand? talking about something that's about the size of this stage here in the studio. So, so this computer is about a black cube about the size of this television set, right? and yet it has the intelligence and memory or whatever that's equivalent to 7 billion human brains. That's correct. Now, this is a housing. This is a, a shield that separates it from all electromagnetic interference okay. to maintain the stability of the processor. Okay? It's what's called coherence and decoherence in computer science. But inside the cube is something that is arranged just like the spinal column of a human. Hmm. And it has what are known as qubits that are essentially constructed of gold, but other components. But these are not transistor-based. Qubits are a complete departure in the technology from transistors, which are silicon gate mm -hmm. um, model, gate model um, processors. This is a complete quantum leap, leap into a, another way of processing information. And it does so so quickly that it has no relevance, no comparison to the gate model transistor-based, even transistor quantum computer. So we're talking about something that most people who've not studied Mm -hmm. The adiabatic quantum computer process can't wrap their heads around. It's a very deep topic, but I want to be succinct here. It operates interdimensionally. When I spoke of earlier that they're already communicating with the other side, without having opened a gateway, a portal, a physical portal in the dimension, they're communicating using this computer because, and this comes right from the manufacturer, this is public disclosure information. I didn't have to get this in a secretive manner. They do what are called combinatorial programming. They take all possible solutions and at one time feed it into the machine through an interface, which happens to be a black cube itself, the interface device, and by their own admission, it enters into another dimension where the processing takes place, and then they extract from that other dimension the solution to the combinatorial problem. That is communication with an actual physical tool to another dimension. Now, when it's communicating to another dimension, is it communicating to, to a consciousness or an intelligence in another dimension? Yes. It is? Yes. Because it happens definitively, repeatedly, measurably. They're able to do this consistently. There was a lot of doubt in the transistor-based world of quantum computing that mm -hmm. the, the company that put this quantum or qubit based processor together that they really were achieving any definitive answers mm -hmm. and that were reliable and coherent, okay, that were stable. But they have proven over and over again. Let me give you one example of who's, who's purchasing Google. The first model was purchased by Lockheed and USC with an open public computer laboratory that the public can access with their first model and it has advanced through 512 model, for example, were two of which were purchased by Google a few years ago. They now have the 2048. The 2048 represents the number of qubits. That is connected to the Large Hadron Collider for the purpose of opening the portal and maintaining the stability of it. Okay, so when you say this computer is connected to the Large Hadron Collider, it, it somehow is electronically or something connected to? It's no different than our computer networking setup. So it's, it's networked into the Large Hadron Collider. That's correct. So we, we have literally, um, it's like, it reminds me of 2001 A Space Odyssey. There's the, there's the ape. PAL and the, 9000. Yeah, and then there's the ape and the obelisk and then PAL. Sure. Know, and yet I, I believe in the biblical worldview. Sure. But... It would seem to me that with this level of seven billion human brains of intelligence, and and this is the B system. Yeah, the B system. It it seems to me that it is already well. It's already artificially intelligent. Absolutely. But it must be advanced, self advancing itself. Yes. So it, it, it's moving towards a singularity where its its intelligence surpasses man. Mm -hmm. Do you That's think correct. it's already on the way to that? It is. That is the goal. 
the question often arises, is it yet sentient? Is it self-aware? I don't right. believe it is. Okay. I don't, and I base that only on the evidence that I look at, not conjecture or speculation. So I don't how, think it so, has. So, so how, tell us how, in a biblical sense, this connects with the beast system in the book of Revelation. Well, the beast system we hear of, if you don't accept the mark of the beast, then no man can buy or sell. All of that control mechanism. How do you control over 7 billion people? Right. You have a computer that's equivalent to 7 billion people. That's why I right. cite that. Coming from the manufacturer's own citation. Okay? So I'm just repeating their information. But the point is, you have to have a sophisticated system to be able to control not just the movement of people and the movement of goods and transactions and governments, but the minds of people. You're creating a surf class of human beings. Right. When you accept the mark of the beast, you lose all awareness that you have even been modified. You don't even know that you've been changed. So your memories are erased, like some of the sci-fi movies. Well, in the sense of your own self-awareness, your right. own knowledge of your soul. Okay, so when you take the biblical mark of the beast, which mm -hmm. is uh, technology, it, it's, it, it's deeper than, than it what? goes to the DNA. It goes to, tell us how it goes to the <laughs> DNA. Okay. This sounds far-fetched, but when you accept the mark of the beast, what you are actually doing is accepting into your body. And there will be numerous routes to this. This can be through inhalation of nanoparticles. This can be the acceptance of a vaccine for you and your children and your loved ones. Once it's introduced into the body by any route, it then is a modifier to the DNA. I call it the third strand of DNA. We have a double helix. This is going to be a triple helix. This is an artificial construct that can be digitally imparted with information and then controlled from an external source. That control mechanism, the linkage, comes through the electromagnetic connection. We can call it microwaves or whatever, or ELF, extremely low frequency, be it whatever frequency. But that is the link to humans from that computer, and that is the beast system that controls us through our DNA, which has been modified, and then it changes our thought processes. It rewires our synapses in our own mind. Right. Because our brains are constructed from our DNA. Right. You modify the core, you modify the brain. Powerful stuff. Our guest is Anthony Patch. You need to record these programs. You need to distribute them to your friends, and you need to, to, to review them because there's been so much content that would be impossible to understand and, and, and process uh, without a repeated viewing. And invite your friends over. Share it with people that are not saved. I, I guarantee you that it will be, a, uh, we're called to be fishers of men. It, this is great bait. <laughs> because the fish are interested in this topic and it's based on the truth of biblical revelation and the truth in, in Genesis. I, I want to uh, share this with you and I'm so thankful that we had the opportunity to interview uh, Anthony and his incredible research. Um, you, this may be overwhelming to you, but I want to just remind you of something, and I know Anthony knows this, and I know many of you know this. God knew you before the foundation of the world. He knew you outside of space and time. He knew you before he created the world. He pre-planned for you to be here at this exact time period in human history. Now, since God pre-planned for you to be here in this time period of human history, where, where, where all this stuff is happening that Anthony is explaining and others from a biblical perspective, you don't have to have fear because God pre-planned for you to be here in this time zone when all this stuff was going on. And that obviously implies that God already downloaded in you before the beginning of time, and I'm using this in a metaphorical sense, the apps or applications or the spiritual gifts or the natural gifts that you need to be victorious in yeah. dealing with all this stuff that we've been talking about. Because God pre-planned for you to be here. So this should not cause a panic attack. This should cause a a, a release of supernatural joy and expectation because you are downloaded with something 
far more powerful than this seven billion human mind computer. You've been given the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ is vastly superior to everything we've been talking about. And you have the Holy Spirit living inside you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Oh, yeah. So fear, it, it should not even be an option. So I rejoice, and I am sure Anthony and many of you would agree with me, as Joshua and Caleb said to the Lord, they offered the Lord a good report when they were confronted with the, the knowledge of a great spiritual battle. They said to the Lord, we are well able to take the land and God equipped you and you are well able to take whatever land God is calling you to possess. So rise up in the spirit of Joshua and Caleb and you have the anointing of the Holy Spirit and go for it. I'm Paul McGuire and you've been watching Apocalypse and the End Times on God TV. I just have to say amen and amen.